In anticipation of making a future video on nickel plating, I need to make both nickel chloride and nickel sulfate. So let's go ahead and make some nickel chloride to start. Some information, nickel as an element was discovered in 1751 by Swedish chemist Axel Kronstedt, and he called it devil's copper. Wow, what a name. Nickel chloride was discovered in the late 1700s. However, there were no specifics that I could find as to who made it first. When nickel is in nickel chloride, it's in the two plus oxidation state. And you can see here from my little diagram, here's the plus two nickel and the chlorines each have a negative charge, which are attached to either side of the nickel atom. Nickel chloride is also paramagnetic. And if you draw it out in such nomenclature as here, you can see that there are two, two free or a pair of electrons that are left untouched up here. And that is what makes nickel chloride paramagnetic. When it comes to energy, nickel chloride is used in both nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydrate batteries. I'm getting tired of saying the word nickel. NiCl2 imparts a green color to flames when it comes to pyro. NiCl2 crystals dehydrate between 100 and 350 degrees Celsius, so it doesn't take that much heat actually. Once they're anhydrous, they're a yellow color, and nickel chloride without the water, if it's heated further, decomposes into nickel oxide and into chlorine gas, but you need to reach temperatures of about 740 degrees Celsius to do that. And one last thing with the information here, nickel chloride is extremely hydrophilic, um, it already has six waters bonded to it, but if it's left out with any humidity, it rapidly decomposes into a solution of nickel chloride and water. Moving on to our materials right here, we need nickel metal, a 10 grams. I'm going to show you the kind of nickel I'm going to use this time. Before I tried to cut up rods and it was painfully slow to break it up, but this time I have these nickel strips, so to speak. So I'll weigh out 10 grams of these and it turns out that, of course, pure nickel is magnetic. We also need 31% hydrochloric acid. 55 milliliters to start and that of course is always to start because often you need to add more and hydrogen peroxide 10% also to start meaning I'll probably go up in percentage of 10% doesn't seem to be doing the trick. Nickel is hard to break down. These of course are the two oxidizers that we'll be using to break down the nickel and make their nickel chloride. In our reactions we have nickel plus two hydrochloric acids yields nickel chloride and hydrogen gas. One of the things to be aware of when you're doing this experiment. The overall reaction if you're using hydrogen peroxide is nickel plus 2HCl plus H2O2 yields nickel chloride plus two waters. The H2 or hydrogen gas that comes from this reaction right here always comes from the hydrochloric acid and the hydrogen from the H2O2 is reduced meaning it gains two electrons becoming H2O. Just a comment on where the hydrogens come from and what they turn into. In our methods it's actually pretty straightforward. So we have our nickel metal down here, our strips. We're gonna add the 31% hydrochloric acid to start with, 55 milliliters. And then of course, adding the hydrogen peroxide will improve our results of breaking down the nickel. It will be under heat the whole time. I don't like to go above 70 degrees Celsius when using hydrogen peroxide because it will start to break down. You can go up maybe to 80 degrees, but I've done experiments in the past where I broke the hydrogen peroxide down so badly that at the end it didn't really do something because it just entered this solution and broke down. As the experiment continues, we'll add the hydrochloric acid or the hydrogen peroxide as needed until we can get all of the nickel dissolved. Again, we're using heat. The reaction itself is exothermic, so even though you want to keep it the temperature lower here, if it starts to break down quickly, even without heat, this will heat up sometimes to 80, 90 degrees Celsius, and you can't do anything about that, just part of the reaction. Once all the nickel is dissolved, you want to heat it to get rid of as much water as you can, and once it gets down, usually to about 10, 15% of its original volume or so, I'll start to chill it to see if we can get crystals. If not, put it back on the heat and get rid of more water and chill it until crystals form. Once these crystals are formed, I plan on vacuum filtering them and using some very cold water, uh, distilled water, of course, just to briefly wash them to get rid of any impurities. And then we dry them and weigh them. Well, that's a wrap. Let's go make our nickel chloride hexahydrate right now. 10 grams of solid nickel strips pre-weighed, 55 milliliters of 31% hydrochloric acid pre-measured. I'm using a 250 milliliter beaker here. You see it has the magnetic stir and the thermometer and they're ready to go. I'm just going to transfer those nickel strips into here. I won't be able to start the magnetic stir until things of course have dissolved more, but I'm going to start adding the hydrochloric acid here just a little bit at a time to let it work. I have the fume hood running and this will start to give off some hydrogen gas almost immediately. You can see the fuming there. So we're going to do a little bit of time lapse here. This has been running for approximately 40 minutes right now. And you can see without adding the hydrogen peroxide uh, to this, a passivity layer forms and pretty much the reaction, although it's moving, it's moving extremely, extremely slowly. So I'll be moving 
uh, next to adding the hydrogen peroxide and you will definitely see the difference. The temperature is at 55 degrees Celsius. You probably can see that. But I have 60 milliliters here of a 10% solution of hydrogen peroxide and I'm just going to be adding this slowly and we'll uh, hopefully dissolve this nickel quicker. It's been another half hour. You can see that the uh, solutions turned a little bit more green with the 10%, but I'm now going to move on to 20% as that did very little. And if 20% doesn't work, I'll move up to 30%. I added approximately uh, 50 milliliters of the 10% in case you're keeping track here with me. The temperature is a little bit on the lower side at around 45 because this is an exothermic reaction and it will bump it up at least 10 degrees Celsius. I added about 15 milliliters total of the 20% and it helped. It's darker green, meaning the nickel's more dissolved and we're getting some nickel chloride, but that's not gonna be enough. So I'm gonna add here approximately five milliliters of additional 30% hydrochloric acid. It's been another 20 minutes and not a lot happened. The primary reason I added the hydrochloric acid was to balance out the fact that we're adding hydrogen peroxide to it and I'm going to do that again but I've moved up to 30 percent. I don't want too much additional fluid added to this because we need to get rid of it eventually so that's why I'm increasing the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide which you have to be very careful with these percentages um, rather than add a bunch of 20 percent and needing to get rid of the water I can add less 30 percent. Okay, that's about five cc's. It's been another 40 minutes. I added all of the 30% hydrogen peroxide, which was 50 milliliters during that time here. And I've also added another 10 milliliters of the 31% uh, hydrochloric acid. Um, also, the nickel is now breaking down to the point that I can use the magnetic stir. So what I'm going to do is start stirring it pretty aggressively here. I'm not going to add anything, but I'm just going to increase the temperature slowly up to maybe 60 degrees Celsius since I'm pretty much done adding the hydrogen peroxide, I think. So I'm going to do that next. One last comment. I did not have the temperature up when the thermometer hit around 90 degrees Celsius. I had actually turned the thermometer or the temperature off on the hot plate completely. It was the reaction of the hydrochloric acid, hydrogen peroxide, and the nickel that made it reach that 90 degrees Celsius. So the temperature I have set right now on this is 7 degrees Celsius. I reached a temperature of about 80 degrees Celsius and it's been running for about a half hour with this mixing and a little bit more dissolved but it doesn't look like it's still going to quite do it so we're back to the 30 percent hydrogen peroxide i am going to keep the mixing turn it down just a little bit here though so we don't form so many bubbles that uh, it overflows which almost happened one time so i'm just going to add about uh, five cc's five milliliters here and let it run been another 30 minutes but all of the nickel metal is gone. I ended up adding another 20 milliliters of the 30% hydrogen peroxide and 2 milliliters of the 31% hydrochloric acid. Don't worry, at the end of this I will list the total of volumes of everything I use in order to get all of this nickel dissolved. But at this point we need to heat it to get rid of the water that's accumulated so that we can go ahead and crystallize it. Two and a half hours later, I evaporated this slowly because it's best that way. Um, you can turn the heat up a bit, and I probably would have been okay, but just to be on the safe side, I went very slow. I don't want to repeat any of this, of course. So what I'm going to do now is turn down the heat, turn off the magnetic stir, and allow this to cool down slowly to room temperature. Once that happens, I'll put it in the fridge. It's taken about 45 minutes, but it's cooled down to about 25 degrees Celsius here, and that's room temperature where I'm at, so let's go put it in the fridge. In it goes. Time to take it out. It's been in here for about three hours. I also did a few things to it in the meantime, which I didn't show you, but I'll explain. But look at that. There's our nickel chloride hexahydrate. All set up here. It's a vacuum filter, and I just want to go over what I briefly mentioned as I took this out of the fridge. So when you last saw this, it was, there was about 50 milliliters in here, and I had thrown it in the fridge, and after about five or six hours, nothing happened. So I took it out, and I started to heat it again, and I heated it until I started to see crystals forming on the top. Again, it was hot while this was happening. And at that point, I stopped, let it cool down to room temperature, and threw it back in the fridge. 
and then I just took it out and this is what you see. So it had about 50 milliliters, there's probably about 25 in here. Just to give you an estimate, I got rid of about half of what was in there before it actually started to crystallize nicely like this. So I'm gonna chip this out of here and uh, then we'll filter it. I do wanna wash it a bit to get rid of any excess hydrochloric acid especially, but um, let me finish setting everything up and then we'll do that. Just got done raining for the day and I did not get to vacuum filtering this right away. So this is like an hour later and because of the high humidity, you can see what's happened. This stuff is so hydrophilic, uh, it turned into mush again. So it's going back on the hot plate until it uh, dries up a bit. I'll be back when it's done. All right, I did what I said I would do, but due to some unforeseen circumstances, this has now been in here for a week. You can see as it dried out due to the cool air, cool air holds very little moisture, of course. It crept up the sides, but we are ready to move on to the next step. When I first took this out of the fridge there, I really couldn't tell what was going on in the bottom of the beaker here. But if I go at an angle here, you can see that it's anything but flat. And if I can zoom in here, you can see that a lot of crystals have formed here of nickel chloride all the way around. It's also peeling away from the edges, which tells me that it's very dry. So I think what I'm going to do is scrape it out of here and take a good look at it. Um, I may not uh, filter it. I probably won't vacuum filter it at this point. If anything, I might recrystallize it, but I'll even question that. So we'll see what it looks like when I scrape it out. Now that it's scraped out, uh, under that bubble that had formed there in the middle, you can see this was actually nice smooth crystals here and a good chunk of them. Let's break this into smaller pieces here, but uh, I don't, uh, I don't honestly see any reason to go any further th with this right now. So what I'm going to do is grind it up here, break it up into smaller pieces, all of it, and then we'll weigh it and we'll see what we got. I'll set the weight here. Wow, my uh, goal or the yield should have been 40 grams, theoretically, and we got 38.9. I have a calculate, uh, calculator here, and let's do this really quick. 38.9, obviously going to be very high. Uh, divided by 40 here gives us... To demonstrate the paramagnetism of nickel chloride, I've got this little piece of foam here that's going to sit on some water. And I'm sure some of you have seen demonstrations like this before with other materials. I also have a very small piece here of nickel chloride from our batch I'll place in the center. That should be enough. Now the paramagnetism of nickel chloride will cause it to be drawn to these two uh, block neodymium magnets right here. You can see they are rather large, they're not huge, but they're big enough that I should be able to demonstrate this. And as it draws it closer, you can clearly see that. I can drag it around the water. And we'll do it the other direction. Doesn't matter what pole, that's one of the things about paramagnetic objects, is that uh, the north or south pole will work towards attracting the substance, which is the nickel chloride here. So I'll do this one more time just to show it again. It's pretty clear that it follows the magnet, sometimes pretty aggressively. All right, so there's the paramagnetism of nickel chloride.